things that I want to do. Oh, hello. Okay. Um, you know, I have things that I want to do on the weekends, so I can't give up. Well, I yeah. can't give up every Yeah, weekend. so they more have more of a hosting or greeting position in your... Yeah, we call them greeters. Yeah. But they're just here for, you know, from one to four and open things up and and greet the yeah. visitors. Yeah, so everybody has but, something different. Uh, yeah. connections and it's like well, that's why I'll ask different questions like that on here today for what what is available who who's out there who's doing and what what tasks do they do so. yeah and I've you know I've every month I'm on the radio I put plug it on the radio I put it in our newsletter I put it on Facebook I <clears throat> I don't know what more I can do except walk up and down the streets and grab people and that's not nice <laughs> but even if even if people come in and they're locals mm -hmm. during the week, I say, hey, how would you like to be? And then it just. I had a couple that that said, you know, I would love to be able to help out like on Pi Social. I could be a greeter or a helper. But so that part is like, well, yeah, we needed a little a couple extras would have been would have been beneficial. But it's like so that was an awareness of, OK, I can help on that. So put them on the list of call but you know call on this or that so it might gain that person on a different in a different way so yeah well our our biggest challenge for volunteers right now is summer weekends yeah that's my weekend yes yeah, saturdays are bad for me too yeah <laughs> tomorrow i will be up here all day because i don't and i have a volunteer who sits like the first tuesday of the month and she's sort of our quasi volunteer coordinator and she'll spend her entire three hours trying to fill the gaps that we have in our schedule and I'm still sitting up here about 10 times a month because I mean and she has a we have a laundry list of people that she calls yeah. oh no I can't do it or something's come up or you know yeah how do you list. expand like people, so. yeah that's quite the list contact and just go down through them and say are you available yeah. i have my i have my um our board members uh do one saturday and as an involvement and it's an awareness of what what is involved in it and so they have a different appreciation when they do a day <laughs> yeah. well i haven't had a, a whole lot of luck that way so yeah to say you never know and this is like, which way is like, yep. So I, ha so we're always the Saturdays are always in need for a hosting. So I think I get to be next Saturday. So I think Marion's doing this week, and I, but I think I'm on next one <laughs> unless Julie's available. So. Yeah. Well, and I have a few people who will do like one day a month, which is better than nothing. And then I have a couple people who say, you know, I can do any Sunday that you need me. Well, I hate to put them four weeks in a row that's not fair to them either so to try to balance things out and it just gets to be a challenge yeah this year is much harder than past years have been for some reason we got carrie on there and april on here and kristen on if we're gaining well, and our board president is sitting next to me. She's trying to get on with her <laughs> with her iPad and, and not having much luck for some reason. We want to, it's 10 30. We want to go ahead and start our formality of it. Doing. Um, I'm Tammy Hendrickson, and I'm at Custer County Museum. And um, we are the historical society, uh, but we also have a genealogy and a photo gallery here, and some art, some variety of different things here at the museum. So, getting um, today's topic is getting um, a volunteers to help out and recruitment and retention and sources of the information. Echoing. Um, the, 
the round table discussion we were just just having a little bit of is um do you have volunteers at your organization and uh what are your volunteers tasks that they do or how are they involved uh one other piece was how do you get them and how do you uh keep them so there's kind of a combination of different answers here so um mine i'll start with mine um, I do have volunteers here. They do uh, the Saturday, what we were just talking about is the Saturday hosting or greeting. And uh, they are responsible for greeting the person, answering the phone and answering whatever they can do in here in genealogy or things. And they said, well, I'm not an expert in that. You just have to be here, <laughs> just be here and they can explore the things they see. Um, and then the other one I do is I do have um, a variety of ages. Oh, yeah, that's one of the things we ask. Um, most of mine are retirees, but I do have teenagers that come in on the other end of the realm. And I use do the uh, honor society or that type of uh, volunteer or community service things. And also to offer a summer internship uh, scholarship and that's involved those kids and then they've come back to do their um, different hours for the different organizations they have. You want to go around and introduce and say do you have volunteers what ages or what's their task? Like, April do you have um, volunteers at your organization? Um, we do but they're um, they're uh, they're more periodical on an as needed basis rather than like a regular thing. Um, I would love to be able to have regular volunteers here. It's just with our limited permanent staff, it's literally just me. I'm the only full-time staff here. Um, it's hard to manage volunteers when I'm the only person here. But um, yeah, we do. And uh, typically it's working with like community organizations where they need some like leadership programs where they need like four to six hours of volunteer hours. We'll have them come in and typically what we have them do is kind of the work, the kind of not fun work, I guess, like uh, cleaning is a big one um, because it takes very little time to show them how to do it. And then you can just kind of let them go, you know. So, uh, but yeah, mostly it's uh, stuff like that. And so, yeah, uh, my name is April White. I'm the director over at the Frank Museum. Sorry, I should have said that at the beginning. Um, but yeah, we do have some volunteers, but they are more on like an as needed style basis and with us being on unk's campus um there's a lot of student organizations that reach out wanting volunteer stuff and so we'll have them like clean out our basement once a year or something like that it's more um general maintenance stuff instead of because we actually do have paid staff that are students because again we're on campus yeah. but yeah most of the time it's just kind of volunteers on an as needed basis but um, yeah, because if we were to find if we were to have regular volunteers, it'd be hard to find stuff for them to do all the time. That's the main issue that we run into is our volunteers are always too good. They can like sometimes I think a task is going to take two or three days and they can get it done in five to six hours. And then it's like, what do I do? What do you know? And so it's uh, just limited. Um, yeah, that undisturbed time can make that project go quicker than stop and start and stop and start. Right, absolutely. Everybody's shaking yeah. their head, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I'm Kirsten Parker. I'm with the Golden Spike Tower, and Carrie Allen is also on the call. She is our new um, office manager who oversees our volunteer program. So we do use volunteers on a continuous basis. Um, we have about uh, 20 to 25 volunteers um, that are here all the time. And so uh, upstairs on our eighth floor, we have retired Union Pacific employees who are docents who help answer the questions of how things operate on the yard. Obviously, they're the ones with better stories than what we can ever do because they actually worked on the yard. Um, so we can't replicate that by any means. Um, and then we also use um, North Platte is unique. It has a volunteer program um, for our city that the city is ran. And so they organize volunteers to be done throughout the community and it's called RSVP. And so we use RSVP volunteers to help with greet, um, punch tickets, ask them to sign a guest book, um, those type of things. Some, some of them like to help sell in the gift store, uh, depending on some of them have retail background and they miss that from their days. So a lot of them are retirees 
Then we also have another pool of volunteers that we work with that come and help on as needed for events and so forth like that. Um, and so those are anywhere from high school kids to friends of ours to uh, the husband who gets voluntold for everything. Um, so yeah, so we have a wide variety uh, for events as well. And then we do get sometimes um, community service kids that we have them come in and do like repair the flags, wash the sidewalks, pull the weeds, that kind of stuff um, for those kids who might be like in diversion program and, and need some community service type hours. So there's kind of a wide variety of what we do. And then um, there's a couple docents who also um, want to be a little bit more hands-on. So we have a couple of them who bless their hearts. Both Carrie and I are like, let's pay to get it done, but whatever they want to do it is stripe our parking lot okay, have fun. Uh, I think this thing's going to cost us more than it would if we paid for it, but they are excited about it. So um, letting them do it, okay. Uh, we have a couple docents who like to come in and help with um, like our donations that come in, uh, in the sense of like our, our stuff, the physical donations that we get, um, photos and, and books and calendars and all that. They like to help go through it, which is really nice because I don't know what the heck some of that stuff is. Um, and so they do. And so that's always kind of nice. So we uh, we heavily use volunteers. And are, are the ones that go through this stuff, are they local? So they would see that different stuff or are they uh, fellow trained um, employees, railroad employees? Uh, they're that's local, they're local, but they all worked for the yard previously. Okay, so they have some history yeah. that they would know what that is, okay. Exactly. And that's why we have them do it because I could look at a picture and I wouldn't have the slightest clue of what it is. And so, yeah, so they know exactly what it is. They know like if we display it properly or not, <laughs> you know? And so sometimes I will ask them, how is a good way to display this? Or how was this a part of the train? Or how was this part of the system? And so they're able to offer um, a little bit of that, that history base for us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sherry, you want to give what you were talking about earlier on your... Okay, well, I'm from the Platte County Museum in Columbus. I'm Sherry, board president, Teresa, next to me. Um, and our biggest challenge is just May through September when we're open, along with weekdays, we're open Saturday and Sunday afternoons. And we need volunteers to just be here and open up and greet people and turn on the lights and all that kind of stuff. I, I keep reminding people they don't need to know the complete history of Platte County to be a greeter. Um, and in past years, we've had lots and lots and lots, and most of those people have either passed away or are in their upper 80s or 90s and just can't do it anymore. But I would say that of the several that we do have that are fairly regular, they're all, well, I shouldn't say all, there's one that's still working, but they're mostly retirement age. And uh, yeah, it's just to have somebody be here so we can be open. Yeah, that ability to just be the person in in person thing that's sitting there is like, yes, we're here and open. Yes. <laughs> Come in. Aaron, you wanna reiterate? Re you want to reiterate what we were talking about on yours of that extra? Sure. Um, I'm Erin Hauser. I'm at the I'm the curator at the Saunders County Historical Society. I'm also the um, Nebraska Museums Association president. Um, we have we utilize our volunteers more for our hosting, hosting our desk, and actually that's what I'm doing today right now is I'm the volunteer host right now. Um, but we have I have one volunteer excuse me, who acts sort of as our kind of coordinator. And she comes the first first Tuesday of the month and she sits here for three hours and tries to get people to fill in the spots that are empty. And she, I mean, she has, she has some luck, but you know, we have all these people who, they're mostly retirees and I have a few that are just recent retirees, but the trend is now, they're doing so much more with their grandchildren now that they, you know, that's something that's taking away a lot of their time or their babysitting or they're going to all their games or they're doing other things in the community. And I don't want to take away from that, but, you know, our, our volunteers are trying to get new people. 
here is our my volunteer list and it's all kind of scribbled because you know somebody somebody can't come or um, needs a substitute and then this is my this is my list that she called and she just goes down the list and sees if she can find and but like I said they're doing something else or they can't make it and um, we used to have a good group of people who we could call on for special events but again, they've all gotten kind of older and health problems and we can't, um, um, you know, we, we, we can't find the new people because they're so involved with everything else and doing other things. Um, the people with the energy have the kids and of course the kids are in everything these days too. So, um, and yeah, I have, I have one board member who sits for me regularly but that's only because she's retired, um, sort of newly retired. The rest of most, the rest of my org, the board members have a job. Yeah. So, so the common, so the common piece in today is getting that next generation of the near retirement or the the let's say full adults <laughs> uh, to do. Um, so what is it? What what would be a key? You have a network at North Platte. How do they do their uh, resource, uh, their volunteer program through the city? How does how is that registered? You know, I have no idea. You would have to ask the city, the RSVP program. So they are grant funded. And so we have to turn in all the hours and based on the hours of volunteerism, um, they get paid through um, whatever the national program is that helps do it. So it's called RSVP. Um, it used to stand for like retired senior volunteer program but they're trying to get even younger people in um, for that, which is obviously trickier because it has been so known as retired people. And so, um, but they handle all of it and they have a paid staff. So like if we need an event, we call them and we say, hey, we need some volunteers and they call around and they get volunteers signed up for us. So um, it's a really great program, but they have a full-time director and then they have one or two like secretaries that are there. Um, and so they work on retention, they work on recruitment, um, and they help fill voids wherever are needed, you know, and it's they not 100% help. of the time, but yeah. And they probably help a big bunch with the Nebraska land days out there. So that's a big community. No, not really. Um, a lot of Nebraska land days, um, each, so Nebraska land days is interesting. It's kind of like a big umbrella made up of a bunch of other organizations yeah. so the other organizations are actually doing the event under the nebraska lenders umbrella and mm -hmm. so a lot of it is depending on what event and so many most of those events have a pretty good core volunteer group um, like it might be a church that is doing a pork breakfast you know and so they bring in their own volunteers to do that so yeah so rsvp doesn't have to do a lot for that but they do year round so they help our hospital to make sure that our hospital has volunteers um like i said they help us the vol the visitors bureau so it's more of a connection point that brings all volunteers together to learn at what all opportunities are out there hmm. But I think any city can do it. They just have to make it a part of it. And then obviously it's grant funded. So it's, uh, you know, <laughs> we all know what grant funded means. So and there used to be like a program called Green Thumb or something like that, where you did seniors and did they got the money through that organization. I wonder if that's similar and, and getting back into that grouping because some of that is like, well, yeah, that little extra funding helps out incentive. Yep. <laughs> Yep. But then it's like you're coming a different way, but it's like, yeah, that volunteer, tr true volunteer is zero income uh, of that uh, work done. So, but yeah. And the nice thing is, is like I said, they, they help. I mean, we do retention here too. That's part of what Carrie's role is is um, we make sure that our volunteers get some appreciation every single month. Um, we try to rotate it. So um, we break it out to four quarters. So once per quarter, we mail them something to their home, whether it be like a $5 gift certificate for ice cream or just a thank you card or something that's uh, just like a fun photo. One time we just did crazy photos of the staff and said, hey, we love you, we miss you, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, once per quarter, they pick up something when they come in. Typically, it might be like a candy bar or something like that. Carrie can tell you she's doing something fun. What are you you're doing time this month? Is that right? Oh, you're on mute, hon. There yeah. you are. 
You're unmuted. Oh, she's just gonna come in here. That's all right. She's just gonna come in here. So I just put these boxes together that had like um, herb seeds, like thyme and <laughs> dill. And so with them, I put cute little notes that said, thank you for all your time and quotes. And you're kind of a big dill to us. Just cute, fun little things. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, you know, when they come in and, and we don't do it on like a specific day, it's very random, whatever day that that might be. Um, but it might be like a, you know, hundred grand bar, hey, paying you today for, for all your time, you know, those type of things. And then once per quarter, we do a gathering. And so it might be a Christmas party. Um, we have done just a lemonade stand where they just came out and had lemonade. Um, and we do an ice cream social. We did uh, watermelon, just cut up watermelon and had watermelon. And they came out and had watermelon because they love the like the whole person purpose that they volunteers they want to connect and so they love those socials and we have like 80 to 85 percent um participation when we do those socials and brings them all together we could kind of talk about things that are going on and then celebrate them and so that's made a big difference but in addition to that rsvp also does appreciation thing. So they do a Christmas party, they do a burger bash, they do a picnic. So there's kind of another layer of socializing for retention that doesn't come out of my budget and my and our work <laughs> um, that RSVP does. And then also for their phone calls, when they call around, they also send reminder cards to them and say, hey, just a reminder, next Tuesday at five o'clock, you need to report at blah, 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 location. And so there's just, there's a huge piece that they're able to take care of as well. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's very interesting. I was, next part was a reward of the different ones of uh, that. I like the idea of that, that group activity and yeah. the big volunteer, they're never, you know, not usually going to all see at the same time, but they're going to see one or two at a time, but yep. then seeing the other ones that they have done and the, the networking is a nice piece. And then it also gives them a chance, hey, if you have somebody who you think would want to volunteer, bring them to this fun social so they can come check it out. So bring a friend, show them off, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's somewhat worked, not huge, but it works a little bit. But your socials don't have to be expensive. We have a $200 budget for our socials, um, except for our Christmas party. We do go a little bit, I should say a lot more. Um, but our, uh, our socials are anywhere from 100 to 200. I mean, seriously, to buy some watermelon, it, it doesn't cost a lot to buy some lemonade. Um, the ice cream one, we maybe spend $150 on, um, but it's huge and they absolutely love it. Uh, and they mm -hmm. will sit there and they'll just talk for like an hour or so and they re-energize each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those socials are key. And especially after um, COVID, um, we amped up our socials a little bit after COVID. Um, because we needed to get back to wanting to be in person with one another and reminding the volunteers how much they enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, just, just get them back used to coming in and doing things in that way. And rather than individual and no, I, it can't be without you know, doing, but have that comfort zone kind of expand a little more. Yeah. And I also think a lot of people were like, oh, are we ready to go back? And then when they saw that all the other volunteers were ready to go back, they're like, okay, I'm ready. And so there was almost like that re-engagement that needed to happen. Erin, mm -hmm. what do you do? Or April, what do you guys do for um, uh, in, uh, rewards or uh, ignition, recognition or that way for, do you do any of that? We have, we don't do it quarterly, but we have, we hold a volunteer appreciation brunch. Um, in fact, we just had um, our brunch earlier this year um, and usually, you know the the board members we, we we serve them brunch so this year we had breakfast casseroles and fruit and and you know cinnamon rolls and stuff like that and then um, this was actually planned three years ago <laughs> um, so we had we we're usually not this efficient but in 2019 we had our theme ready to go we even figured out what we were going to give them for gifts and we had the invitations all printed and we picked the date and then everything fell apart. Um, and so I've had, I've been sitting on all this stuff for three years and that's like, we're going to do it this year, come hell or high water. And so um, our theme this year was that volunteers are the building blocks of our organization. And um, I've found um, at Oriental Trading Company, these really cute 
they look like Lego bricks, they're little Lego centerpieces, and they were on the tables and little popcorn cups that we put candy and stuff in. And um, the napkins all, you know, all fit the theme. We try to do a different theme every year. And then they get a little, little gift. Um, this year, we just were kind of easing back into it. Um, in the past, we've, we've, you know, had our meal and then we played like bingo or had trivia games or something like that. Um, but yeah, we tend to do it once a year and, it, and, you know, we had, we send out close to 80 invitations. This year we got about 40. So we got about half that came. Um, I just had quite a few people who said that they were, it was just a bad weekend for them. They had other things that they were doing, but so, yeah. So once a year we have a volunteer appreciation brunch, we give them a little gift, um, just, just as a thank you. And then usually it's, um, I had half of my board show up and my board president said something, you know, obviously thanked them and, um, introduced the rest of the board. Cause I think a lot of people didn't, we have some new faces on our board and I think a lot of our volunteers didn't know who our, our volunteer, our, excuse me, who our board members were. And so, and then the board helps serve and clean up and do all that. So that's what we do every year is we, we, we do a, a volunteer appreciation. Yeah. Thing. And we do that yearly piece of recognition. We recognize them at the, uh, usually at our Pi Social, and uh, say thank you for our volunteers that help and kind of help. And they don't like to be called up to the front, <laughs> but just wave your hand in the crowd and that way. So some of those like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to go to the front. <laughs> um, but and say this is you know made possible with all that. And but it's a you know we have a good. 100 people, maybe, you know, they sure had 65 sitting back here uh, at one time, and then the other 30 was in the front room. Um, but that part is like just public recognition and doing that way. And I did have gotten, given them a, um, like a Christmas present or a different piece. So each year I'd make something different. I've made signs, uh, history hero signs in that way, given them that type of things too. Uh, the one year we did, um, uh, glasses and had them etched next door with the history hero with that part of it. So, Sherry, are you up there? I think you're muted. I think you're muted. Can you unmute her? There she went. Nope, April. How about you? Do you do a rewards? Yeah, uh, we, again, we don't have like, I, and I, um, I kind of uh, misspoke earlier when I said we don't have, uh, you know, regular volunteers. We do have one group, but their only task is to take care of just like the gardens and the grounds around the museum. We are an 1889 historic house museum. And so they do a phenomenal job of, um, you know, coming in once a week or, and they kind of just do it on their own. It's kind of like we've built a trust over the years. We've built this trust. And I feel like that kind of is important with volunteers as well to show that you trust them because then they can feel like they've been fully accepted and fully are like a part of the operation, you know, instead of, um, you know, constantly trying to micromanage or something. And the gardens are perfect because they're they're outside. I, I have my own little garden at home, but I'm, I'm not an expert when it comes to plants or growing stuff or anything like that, but they are. They, they, they're they called the Soil Sisters and Misters Garden Club, and they've been around for since about the 70s. And so they do a really wonderful job of taking care and making sure the gardens kind of reflect the time period. And so we've planted like an herb garden and a, a pollinator garden and all this stuff. And what we do for our volunteers, whether it's, you know, our regular garden club that comes and does stuff or whether it's, um, you know, like a, a volunteer who just needs four to six hours of community service for a local group that they're in. Um, we always uh, do with their permission. We always do a, like a, a shout out on all of our social media. And um, I make sure to give recognition and a report at our at our board meetings. And um, uh, just for example, we we're installing a new exhibit out here and it'll all be outside. And they're basically like um, like nature trail 
rails, basically big rails that have a bunch of information and photos on them along the sidewalks around the building that'll talk about the history of the grounds and the gardens and all that kind of stuff. And we made sure to include them in that. So anywhere that we can give them recognition and any sort of like permanent recognition, especially we always try and do that. So that's, that's kind of what we try and do is we really try and promote and, you know, to the public as much as like tell the public, whether it is like a installation on a, on a, on a wayside trail sign or whether it's on our social media or um, anything like that, or whether I can say it at board meetings or promote them at various functions and stuff. Um, we always try to tell the public to give them recognition and stuff, especially our younger volunteers, because we do get some college students who need some hours and things like that, just because again, we happen to be on a campus. And that could be a resource possibly. I know, I don't know if anybody has high schools in their areas, but um, we've reached out to the history teachers at the high schools to see if anybody needs some volunteer hours for college, you know, or an application or whatever they're doing. That's always, you don't really get a permanent long-term volunteer, but if you ever have like an event that just needs a couple volunteers, uh, reaching out to the schools is always a good option as well. Um, but yeah, we try to do as much um, telling the public how much we appreciate. And again, we always ask permission before we put anything on social media or anything like that. But we try to just, yeah, um, and just the last advisory board meeting, we actually did talk about we probably need to sit down and now that now that the pandemic has kind of calmed down, we actually probably do need to do some sort of like luncheon or something for the garden clubs because their work is incredible. So, yeah. If I could add to that, April, I think you um, have a, a really good point there is expressing to the public and saying how much they do for you. Um, I think that that's really important. We do a Facebook right now. Our Facebook person is posting um, a little bit about each volunteer. Once a week, we have a volunteer day and we highlight a different volunteer every day just to tell the public. Um, and we also, uh, if we ever get like in our reviews or in, we do comment cards and stuff, if our volunteers are ever listed as they did a good job or um, I appreciated this, I write them a handwritten note and mail that to them. Um, so that way they see that it's not just me who appreciates them, but somebody from the public appreciates what they did. And so that makes a big, big, big difference. And then we do like um, once in a while, we'll like take out an ad in the newspaper or whatever. And all we will do is in the ad is it'll be different quotes from our guests who visited and what they said about our volunteers. Um, and at our volunteer picnics, we'll put print up like a big poster or we've made um, uh, just like face or uh, place settings like with just paper and it's just quotes of what the customers have said about the volunteers. So it's in the customer's words. So that way people get to see exactly what our customers do. So I think you're right on with that. Absolutely. And I think that is so important to not only have it come from you. Cause that was, that was another thing I just, I was thinking of is whenever we have volunteers, no matter what they're doing, I try to emphasize to them over and over how important the work they're doing and how valuable it is. Like they are contributing to the historical preservation. Even if it's just mopping the floors, that's important work that I'm not able to do. And so trying to emphasize to them, not only that, yeah, what you're doing here is very important work. It's, it's legitimate, valuable work. But then, yeah, like you said, also telling them like, this isn't just coming from me, like people are noticing. So it makes them feel like their efforts are, you know, important and stuff. Although, you know, most volunteers, I feel like they don't do it just for the accolades, but it always makes them feel better and want to come back and keep doing it. If they can feel like they have a connection and a sense of not, not necessarily like ownership, but a, a stake in it, you know, kind of thing, they can, it makes them feel, and then they, you know, might, if they have a granddaughter or grandson or something that needs volunteer hours, they can be like, oh, hey, I already have an in here, come and um, yeah, reach out to them kind of thing, so. Yeah, that that recognition coming back around to saying, well, I see that, but forward that on to there so they can see what was written. And that way it's like, yeah, that's a different, you know, they get to see that that really did. Yeah, I didn't say that, somebody else said that. <laughs> yeah. 
Sherry, are you on there now? I'm next. How you, uh, or topic is how you, what's your recognition or what, what your rewards or recognition um, accolades to the, on your volunteers? Like well, an annual, a quarterly, do you do an incentive? Do you have a banquet or? No, because, well, I'm right now, I mean, we've got maybe six people. Okay. You know, back in the day when we had a lot of people, then we would have a, a volunteer recognition meeting or program or something mm -hmm. like that. But um, that has dwindled over the years simply because we don't have many people. I mean, I thank them up one, day, up one side and down the other for being willing to be here because they know how challenging it is. But as You can have a party with six people, your budget's just less. <laughs> well, that is true. <laughs> that is true, but it that may be something we'll consider in the future. But um, yeah, it's primarily I just thank them and thank them and thank them face to face because they know we're having a hard time getting people to to come and be here for three hours on a weekend day. Yeah. I like the other idea where you said, so one of you guys said something about contacting the history teachers um, or asking the, that, that part of that community service, that you know, involvement in that way uh, of doing. So that's kind of where my um, high school interns come from is that kind of group. And then they come through another uh, entity or um, a club or organ. Yeah, they, they need different things. Uh, asking the teachers, um is that a is that a you know is that a requirement i know we always tell the kids i said it's more fun to come as a couple or a group and do a project together possibly as that hours on a day and then all of you guys can have fun and we can get things done uh you know a different group so that is like incentive wise of group activity and having a little uh some a snack or lunch for you know that way with them too. Um, what's your other piece of the thing? Um, yes, I do have yeah, the uh, we've talked about event having them do event host, um, digitizing or scanning or cleaning or garden or um, hosting and the different things. Uh, but sounds like most of them are in the retiree ages. What would be an idea we could pass past to get that, that not the retiree, but just the generation down or another generation to come in? Is there an incentive that we could think of that would be get that, like, is there an idea? <laughs> I think we have to consider that taking time from our non-regular hours, because those are probably the times that those people have, you know, we might have to give up a weekend or a, a weeknight or something like that. And maybe I, I hate to throw the party out again, but have a party or have something, some sort of event um, to try and bring people in and maybe have it, Maybe do it. I don't want to say sneakily, but don't don't pitch it as well. We want you to come in and volunteer. Maybe we just have it. Hey, why don't you come in and learn about the museum or come and see what we do here, rather than you know kind of show them different aspects and maybe sort of hint. Well, you know, if you're really kind of interested in this, maybe you would can you'd like to volunteer rather than just shove it in their face. Hey, we need a volunteer. Can you come and do it? You know, kind of do kind of like trying to get your kid to eat a vegetable, you know, you kind of sneak it in there somehow, or maybe, maybe that's something that we got to do is, is just kind of, you know, approach it from a different way rather than, well, we just need a volunteer, you know, we need a volunteer, we need a volunteer, because I think people get tired of hearing that, and I don't know about in your areas, but in our areas, they have lots of places that they can volunteer, um, you know, 
a lot of the churches need help. You know, their, their people in their churches are starting to get older. And so they need those younger people. We have a senior center thrift store that needs volunteers to, to help with that. So maybe we just need to do it at a different time. Um, you know, maybe not in the summer because that's everybody's so busy in the summer, but then things get, you know, nobody wants to get out when the weather's crappy. <laughs> No, so we kind of have to hit that sweet spot of, of, of where it is and just not, you know, try to figure out a different way to get those volunteers is, instead of just, hey, we need you to come and volunteer. Maybe we just have, you know, hey, come and learn about us and see what we can do for you. And maybe you can turn around and help us. So, yeah, uh, we're, we're looking, you guys have had your 150th. We're looking at what kind of things we can come to our 150th. One of the things was inviting like a, um, some of the different groups to say, can you spend a night in the museum, camp in the museum? Is that, a, is that an oddity? And it's like, kind of, I think that was a piece of, well, will that get them in the museum as a challenge? But yet then they're here and they say, okay, can we do, you know, oh, you need, I see you have this. I could probably do that. So I've had some of them, once they get in for some other event, like, uh, like the Easter egg things, and that is like, they'll come in to do that, but it's not history oriented, but it's community oriented, but it gets them in the door. So I think the other all- thing is they just want to make a difference. And so if you just say, will you come in and volunteer? They don't know what that means they don't know if it's going to make a difference but if you say hey I know you're really good at this and I really need some help with this can you come in for like an hour and help me with xyz that would really help with whatever and that really helps too because they just uh, you know we actually find we find the opposite that they want to spend the summer here because they know that they're making a difference they know that they're going to have guests they know that they're going to have the ability we bribe them to come during the winter because we still have guests, but it's so much slower. And so they know they're not making as much of a difference. So we've had to like record videos of them because we know they can't be here all the time. Um, During the month of January, February, we sometimes actually set up recliners up on the eighth floor and say, take a nap from the eighth floor. We'll get you a TV. We had a little fireplace set up. We had a little area set up for them that they absolutely loved. Up. Um, and they, every winter, they're like, when do the recliners come back? You know, and we would call them if a, a volunteer was going to come up. Um, but they hate the winters because it's so much slower and they don't feel like they're making a difference. So yeah. I think reminding them what their volunteering is doing. So don't necessarily call it volunteering, but hey, can you help That's me with reason. blah, 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 blah. Because I know you're good with blah, 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 blah. <laughs> or you would enjoy it. And then you'll see that they get hooked in. I had a, I had a couple that, that we were, did some project and it's like we needed like an index to a set of books that we had done with scanning. And it's like, well, can I, can I take that? It's, it's a printed copy. It's not the original. Sure. You know, is that a way you could do? They were coming in and doing so that little tiny of a start and to try, I was like, well, I can make that. I can do that. So that accomplishment part of that is, you know, try it and you might like it, (laughs) but just a start of it. So yeah, that enticement of, uh, yeah, yeah. The recliner one is kind of a trick. (laughs) Just like, hmm. (laughs) Well, we just try to figure out how can we make them feel more comfortable and and let them come up and and still want to come up because we still have guests, you know, and stuff like that. And so, um, and it does make a difference, but we know that there's times there where they're just twiddling their thumbs. So we're like, all right, how can we make it more fun? So literally one day when they came up, we had a fireplace set up and two recliners and uh, magazine area set up for them. And they could just sit there. (laughs) Yep. And they could just sit there and enjoy Uh, We have a little fridge up there that they always have water and and sometimes we have juice in it and hard candy because they talk so much. And so, yeah, so it's just thinking about what would they want, you know, and so just kind of doing those element of surprises sometimes is fun. They never know what they're going to get when they walk in the door here. (laughs) So that party of six could fit in those, you know, those recliners would be great. (laughs) So, yeah. And I know that the same thing I think goes throughout that uh, winter season is not as active as the summer season, of course. Um, 
we usually do a lot of our uh, behind the scenes things or display uh, things in that winter ready for spring. So part of that is like, let me know, do you need any, can I help you with any painting or any of that on the wall things or what, you know, that way. And so there's some pieces that, that some of them say, well, does this need to be redone um, in that way? So I've got uh, a set of quilts that are, um, Barb was going to put the little pockets on the back so you can hang um and in that way so that would be a winter project probably as they're going to be hung up by summer um but make that extra pocket on the back of them uh some of them do from home i do uh people that do clippings for our archives here so that part of it they don't do the scanning but they do the daily clipping uh from home and then they bring them in and then another set of helpers do the filing of them so it's kind of a this one gets to this and this one gets to that and then the next one will be um uh, this the next one will be this you know the different stages of that so did she get any of those done so they know each other but they don't yeah that that other part of that networking would be a, a, a create a little uh, party we've had like before covid we've had little parties or had little events or teas or different things like that for that group and then they get to see each other uh, in that way we've had meals I think at one of the meals, I would I was a volunteer at that point and not curator. I was I was called Vicky. Um, Vicky does this and Vicky does that. Well, I think she's meaning me, but I don't think that that person had the wrong name for me. <laughs> but it's like, well, hey, you want to come on up here? And I said, the ones at the table said, I think they're talking about you, Tammy. <laughs> so my my husband said, I guess I have another wife named Vicky <laughs> tonight. Surprise guest. <laughs> So maybe like maybe that might be a thing of give a different name tag, you know, uh, a little uh, night of guess who I am uh, doing. So that might be something else leading in and saying, hey, what would that be a little uh, a game of clue or something like that of what kind of thing. So who, who am I? I don't know. <laughs> type thing. So, yeah. Any other ideas? um tricks tips things we've all I think we've gone through a lot of it anything else Aaron on our list of doings what's our next so, but um I, I I was sitting here listening I I kind of had this suggestion thing pop into my head that um we should probably utilize the amount of volunteers and the amount of volunteer hours when we talk to our funders. I don't know how many of you do that, um, but it just sort of popped into my head in a couple of weeks here, we're gonna be going up to our supervisors and you know doing our annual begging of, for money. And I don't know if they realize just how much our volunteers do and how many hours they put in and the sheer numbers that we have. I mean, I'm sure that they know that we have them, but I think we, we as organizations, we need to put that out there. It's like, you know, we have all these people who really support our organization. I'm not talking about members, I'm talking about volunteers who freely give their time. And the general public, yes, needs to know about it, but our funders need to know about it too. You know, if our, if our board of supervisors knows, hey, I've got 80 volunteers and they're giving me a couple hundred hours a month, you know, yeah, that they may, we, we usually report like our visitors and where they're from, but that other part of, yeah, using that volunteer hours to use in that report also, or number of volunteers that help out. So it's, it's amazing. And some of them will use their volunteer hours on uh, the other organizations of, you know, you're doing here, but it works on DAR, it works on um, uh, as, you know, the different ones. So it's like, well, this works in the, the does also as the amount of volunteer hours you do. Uh, we so have it actually pieces. as a, um, we have it on our, our um, balance sheet. So we give it a $10, $10 per hour value and we record it every month as part of our month end of how many volunteers did we, we use. And at what value would that be? Because that's very important for your board to have that information, because if they need to employ somebody, if they can't find volunteers or whatnot, they need to know about what hours 
you would need. And also for grants, a lot of times grants need to know what your volunteer is. So if you just get in the practice of just recording that and giving it a monetary value, um, and we have it recorded as an expense and as an income. So it isn't, so that way it balances out to zero. So it doesn't change our bottom line. Um, but it is recorded as an, as an expense and a, an, an income every single month. Yeah. And I have like a, like a login sheet. They just, you know, sign on and do how, what they come in and go out and, um, their totals. And I use that as the grant pieces. Um, but as they do, that's also their check-in or time in time sheet. When they do these, you know, they need so many hours, go back to, if you didn't sign there, you're not getting it. So that, that part is just a clipboard. It's, you know, I have a note on the clipboard. It says, thank you for helping out. Uh, yeah, very grateful for what everybody does. Uh, you know, so it's like, whether it's an hour or whether it's six hours or whatever, uh, or what they've you know, helped out with. Um, so those are all part of the puzzle, but it's like, yeah, that's my time sheet <laughs> for them, for the different groups. But it's like, that way they know that they have to check in. And if they aren't there, they can't be verified. So that kind of goes right across no matter what, whether it's, you know, community service for um, an organization or a court system. <laughs> so part of that. And I have put my name, our name in and renewed that with the, the probation system to what task we do have and what we would, you know, what we'd be willing to do and, and do they match up to that type of thing. And so some of them have come in and been very rewarded with the, you know, their whole experience in that way. And I said, you know, I'm grateful. She said, I'm glad uh, yeah, I, I, I do your, your daily, you know, daily cleaning or weekly cleaning and I'm getting my services done that I need to have done housing uh, requirements. Some of them require housing hours uh, uh, for the housing system. You have to have so many community service hours in our in our area and so that they don't write down on the clipboard they're not going to get their credit <laughs> but yeah so it works as a timesheet type thing so but that does count up but i i like the idea of adding it to your ledger uh as a, an, a line item or showing the the supervisors that amount of volunteer hours it's amazing when that adds up so the different things so yeah Any other comments, questions, doings? Our next topic uh, for next month, who, what do we have next month, Erin? It is ensure the best guest experience, but I don't know who the host is, sorry. So, um, yeah. But that will and be sent out here soon. Yeah, you'll send that out in, your, in our email thing, so, and doing so. And this is always open to anybody with the um, museum connections of any sort. So ideas and networking like that to, to, to you know, connect and do. So, but I don't have any other pieces of my, my discussion, but other than uh, thank you for everybody coming today. Um, and uh, next month, it'll be at the same time, kind of, <laughs> 10.30. Um, and Aaron will let you know on an email or the, the notice things on the website of what, uh, April who's hosting. Will. April does the email. Oh, April does the, <laughs> the, the um, we have, uh, do the notices in that way um, of all the things. So, yeah. So thank you very much, everybody. Yes. Well, we'll catch you next time. Yep. See you next time.